hello, I'm going to tell you a story. Now, this story rightly should be a winter story because it's a story that happens mostly on Christmas Eve, the day before Christmas. Never mind about that. I'm going to tell it to you anyway because it gives me happy memories of when we used to wassail at Lark Rise. What's wassailing, you ask? Well, wassailing is when you go out to your fruit trees, particularly your apples. And what you've got to do is you've got to do this at winter time when they they look like they're dead, don't they? With maybe a few leaves and a few gnarled up old apples still hanging on from a previous year. And they're just getting ready underground. They're gathering strength, aren't they? Deep inside, they're gathering strength, ready to put out the blossom. That's on the trees now where I'm living. And uh, getting ready to turn that blossom into apples. And so what you do in midwinter is you go out there and you have to make a big old noise, maybe a clang a pot and a pan together or, or a big old drum, maybe, if you got it. And you scare away any bad spirits that might be hanging around your apple trees. Oh, no. And then you have to take some warmed juice. You get some apple juice or some pear juice if that, or some cider or some perry. And you, you warm them on the fire to then pop piping hot with some sugar and some spices to make them extra sweet. And you take that out and you pour that over the roots of your trees. And you warm them ready for the next year and you feed them with the sugar and the spices. So they put out their blossom boldly to get pollinated by the bees and to turn that into fruit. It's a way of looking after the trees. And it's nice to have a celebration in the middle of winter, isn't it? So this story reminds me of that. We used to do that at Lark Rise many years ago. We'd go wassailing up and down in the old uh, hedge on the field. Never mind, we haven't done it for a few years. Let's do it again this year. So, once upon a time, there was a farmer. The farmer started out with nearly nothing. He started out with a tumble down cottage with just one room and with a tumble down cow shed. And in a cow shed, a donkey and a cow. And in the field, an apple tree that bore fruit that he made for cider. He looked after it. He polished and brushed, looked after the cow and the donkey till their coats shone like silk. And every year he would go out and wassail the tree bang the pots and pans to square, scare away the spirits and to pour some juice over to sweeten them up and get them ready for the next year. He looked after his things and his things looked after him. He made plenty of money. He bought a field here and, a, and then he bought a field here and, a field, and he, he got enough money. He built himself a lovely big house far away from the tumble down cottage and the tumble down cow shed. Oh yes, he ended up with sheep and cows and lands and woodlands and he did very well. When he had a bit of extra money every now and then, he would either turn it into gold coins and put that in a big old wooden chest, or he might buy a big gold bangle, maybe put that in, or, or a ring with a precious stone in it, he'd put that in the box. And when that box was so full it could hardly close anymore, he wrapped a rope around it, put it in his wheelbarrow, and he took and he buried it somewhere full of treasure, because he didn't believe in the bank. Well, as well as all that, he had two sons. He had an older son who was faithful and kind and would help anybody out in a pinch. And he had a younger son who was lazy and wanted everything done for him. So it was kind of a surprise when he died. This is sad, isn't it? Because people do die. And in this story, it's the old man who dies and the two sons who are left behind. We're not going to hear about the old man again. But he's done well in his life. We can be proud of him. So the younger sons, when he died, they had to look at his will to find out who got what. And what a surprise, because the younger son, the lazy younger son, got given everything. The farms and the fields and the big house and the lands and the woodlands and the streams and all of the livestock. And for the younger son, for the, sorry, for the older son who worked hard and did good, nothing was left. Not a thing. Just a little sentence saying, but for one gold coin a year, he could rent the original house, the tumble down house and the tumble down cow shed and look after the old donkey and the old cow and the old, old tree. But he must pay his brother a coin a year every day on Christmas Eve, a gold coin. So that's what happened. The younger son paid for someone else to look after his farms. He had so much he didn't need to do a job of work himself. 
and the older brother looked after the tumble-down house where his father had started with the tumble-down cow shed and the cow and the donkey very old now and he still looked after them and he brushed them and combed them and curried them polished them till their coats shone like silk and every year Christmas Eve he would take out a pot and a pan and he'd bang and bang he'd wassail he'd say spirits get away from my old tree and then he would take a pot and heat up some apple juice in there with some uh, spices and some sugar to sweet and thick and then he'd pour it on to the roots of the old apple tree to get it sweetened up and strong and ready for the next year and he looked after his things and by and large they looked after him he wasn't rich but he survived and every year on Christmas Eve his brother would come round his lazy younger brother would say come on I've come for my gold coin Sometimes that was easy. He's had a good year and he could easily give him the gold coin. Some years it was harder. He had to scrape it together. And every year he'd say, come inside and sit with me, brother. Let's talk about our father and talk about old times. Nah, he'd say. The younger brother would say, I don't want to come and sit in your filthy house. Look, you live like a, like a beast in there. No, I live in a fine house. You live in a poor house. But... <laughs> One year, and it's the year we're talking about, it was a very bad year. And the uh, older brother had no coins to rub together at all. He had nothing. And Christmas Eve came around and he was a bit scared. And his younger brother came and he knocked on the door with a... And he said, brother, I've come for my coin. And if you can't be my, me my coin, I shall throw you off the land. Oh. I haven't got a coin this year. I haven't a thing to rub together, but I've been making cheese from the cow's milk and it's nearly ready to sell. I'm thinking if you live me a, a week or, or two weeks, I can pay you because I can take my cheese to market and sell it. And then I'll have a coin to give you. No, I want it now. And if you can't pay, I shall throw you off the land. I shall. I will come back later. <laughs> I've an idea. <laughs> He's an idea. Our old father used to say that if you go to the cow shed at midnight on Christmas Eve and listen, you'll hear the, the donkey and the cow talking to each other. <laughs> Maybe I'll come back and listen and see if they will tell me where the treasure is. <laughs> Either that or you're off the land. <sighs> and he walked down the lane and shut the gate and away he went. Well... Wow. Poor elder brother, he didn't know what to do with himself. He had no money. He didn't want to be thrown off the land, but he knows, he knew how important it is to look after things. So he gave the cow a rub down. He gave the donkey a brush and he gave them food, better food than he ever gave himself. And he went into his house and it comes down early, doesn't it? Night in the winter time. It comes down early, so it's dark by tea time. Just after his tea, it was pitch black outside. But he got a pot and a pan, and then he, he warmed some apple juice with spice and with sugar to warm it up, and he went outside to, to wassail. And he clanged and banged the pot and the pan together. He said, oh, you bad spirits, you get away from my trees. Don't you hang around. You go away with the old year. We'll have new stuff, new luck in the new year. And then he took his warmed pan of apple juice with sugar and spices and he poured it over the roots of the old apple tree. So now you take that. And then he said, apple tree, apple tree, I've looked after you. Will you look after me? Which he said every year. And he said that. Something strange happened. Because the bark of the apple tree opened like a pair of doors and out stepped the apple tree man he'd never seen him before he's a wizened old fella dressed in a little green jerkin and little brown trousers and a face all wrinkled up like an apple that's been left in the fruit bowl too long but he said oh, i see you i see you you care for others you take care of me and you take care of the cow and dog i shall look after you you get your spade and you dig down here in my roots and what you seek you shall find and then he went back into the room. So the older brother ran and he got his spade and he came back and he did dig in the roots of the apple tree. And what did he find? He found that box of treasure. Ooh, he says. 
I've got gold coins now. I can pay my brother. And he dragged the box into his house and he waited. Just before midnight, there were footsteps up the lane and a creak of the gate and in came his brother. And he, the older brother, called out and says, Brother, I've got your good. Be quiet, he says. You've got nothing. I've got nothing for you. I'm going to throw you off the land. And then he went over and he listened and he watched through the window of the old cow shed. And there's the donkey chewing its oats. And there's the cow chewing on some straw. And far away, other side of the trees, listen, it's the sound of the church bells. Clang. Clang, clang. Here's the church bells. It's ringing for midnight. And on the twelfth ring, something happens. The cow turns to the donkey and says, Oh, hello, donkey. And the donkey turns to the cow and says, Oh, hello, cow. You've been all right this year then? Oh, yeah, I've had a good time this year. Thank you. He'd be looking after you proper, like his old dad done. Oh yeah, he is, yeah. Shall we, uh, shall we talk about treasure then? Treasure? What treasure? You know the treasure. Shall we tell him where it is? Nah, says the donkey. Because that old brother of his, who's good for nothing and never helped anybody a hand turn in his life, is listening at the window and he don't deserve a thing. Well, the younger brother heard that and he was so surprised and so shocked that his hair turned white and he ran down the lane and he was never seen again, not until St Kitts Eve. And if you don't know when St Kitts Eve is, that's a very long time. And the older brother... He got what he deserved, didn't he? He got all the treasure. And with that, he could buy up the land. And he could buy up the house. And he could live well. Partly because he'd, uh, he'd waited his time, I guess. But also because he'd looked after his stuff. He looked after the cow and the donkey and the apple tree. And you know what I learned from it? What it makes me think is, it doesn't matter if you live in a big house or a little house. If you look after your friends, they'll look after you. And that, my friends, is the story of the Apple Tree Man. I hope that uh, you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed telling it to you. I'll do another story for you quite soon, I hope. I hope you're all having a good time. Um, if you, so I'm embarrassed to say this, but if you like the stories and you're looking forward to them coming out, if you do subscribe, which is a button there, is it? Might be there. I don't know. If you do subscribe, then you'll be hearing the stories as soon as they come out. Have a lovely day, everybody. See you very soon. Bye.